what's up guys and welcome back to another video today's video we're focusing on the specific islands and i mean one thing's for sure whether you love the sport or not but i think we're all in agreement that world rugby need to invest more time and effort into the pacific islands there's so much potential for greatness in those islands and we've seen brilliant ta talent come out We've seen them come out of New Zealand. We've seen England with the Vinopola brothers. We've really seen stars come out of the islands. But the question is, why do they leave their respective nation to go further a career? Because it's the only opportunity they get to play at the international level. Why is that? Is because World Rugby have not been kinder to these guys. They've not been given the favours or the opportunities to these nations that they deserve. The specific islands, they could have really transformed them by lead, linking them into the rugby championship, into super rugby, creating a team that could be like what we saw in the Jaguars for Argentina. And this would have been the help to progress these nations. We've seen phenomenal performances from teams um, like Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. We really have. I mean, Fiji have done surprises in the World Cup that has really blown our minds. We've seen Samoa and Tonga really show up in performances with their hard hitting, their skillfulness, their tactical play. They've shown a lot of improvement and honestly, they deserve more. They really do. If we look at Fiji and the Barbarians last year, I for one was guilty. I said Barbarians should walk that and I ended up ending my stream earlier than I thought. I was wrong. Fiji came back and got that one. And I was proven wrong. Why? Because that's the mindset of people these days. We are doubting what specific islands can actually do and can produce in the sport. Let's look at Sevens Rugby, for example. Fiji, always nearly at the top, if not often at the top. Why? Because they're given the opportunity to play more games and they're playing against top teams like New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, England, etc., etc. So if we do this in rugby, 15-man rugby, we're going to see the exact same results. Now, I'm not saying Fiji are going to be the All Blacks, but they're definitely going to be a team that can cause upsets, that can show improvement, develop, grow, like we've seen with Scotland, like we've seen with Argentina. Every, anything is possible, but the right people at the top of World Rugby need to actually decide. Now, we've got Augustine Pichot, who has made his his pledge into being chairman and he's gone and said that he's going to bring more to Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, etc. Going to bring more. Now that is fantastic news. But now as a lot of people have been talking about in the drama, is it all just political talk? Is it all yeah, we're going to do it and then you get your big job and then we forget about it? That's the question that I think everyone is concerned about and worried about. Is that is this focus actually going to finally happen? We're talking about all the, the Nations League. We're talking about Club Rugby World Cup. We're talking about Pacific Islands joining in. We're talking about combining teams in together. It's all talk and it's all great, but is it all political? Is it going to happen? Because I think fans are tired of hearing these things and nothing's been implemented in order to impress or improve the game. And that is the key factor. We need to see this happen. We need the specific islands in world rugby, and we need to see more opportunities. Another great example, look at Japan. Who would have thought that five years ago we would have worried about Japan or even thought of them being a threat? The very next year, in the 2015 Rugby World Cup, they beat South Africa and shocked the world. Then they were given a few more opportunities, still not enough in my opinion, but they were allowed in into super rugby what an improvement and we saw that grow we saw that develop then we look at the rugby world cup they got to the knockout stages beating um getting ahead of teams like ireland and all those teams it's phenomenal now if they do the exact same thing in the pacific islands we're going to see just much of the success if not stronger performances from these teams because they are brilliant and equally can achieve greatness that's just my two cents on this matter. I think whoever gets in charge, I'm backing Augustine, obviously, because the South boy, and he complimented me the other day, but 
It needs to be done. Whoever gets this job, we need to bring the sport back to the fans and give the opportunity to these guys who deserve it, who've been hungry and waiting, instead of watching them leave their birth birthplace to go play for another nation. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the Vinopolo brothers playing for for England or the New Zealanders or Australia, etc., etc. But they all want to play for their country. They want to develop and grow. And if you invest money in and you keep your promises, we can see a greatness in the sport and we can see it evolving in so many different communities, which it is so very much needed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on this topic. I, for one, believe this is one of the biggest focus uh, points that world rugby need to consider. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you real soon for another one. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.